Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha. Uh, in this video, I am sharing my learnings on Buddha's teachings on uh, uh, mindfulness of breathing. Uh, now, see, uh, mindfulness of breathing is one of the, you know, um, in Satipatthana Sutra, Buddha says uh, four things that you need to be mindful of, which is like the Satipatthana Sutra is the fundamental, one of the most important discourses given by the Buddha, which says mindfulness of body, feelings, mind and principles. Now, these are the four things that Buddha said that you, you should be mindful of. You can check out my video on Buddha's uh, discourse on the four foundations of mindfulness where I have discussed this sutra in much detail. Now, in that sutra, when you talk, when Buddha says about mindfulness of body, the first thing that he says is the mindfulness of breathing, right? So, breathing, uh, mindfulness of breathing, Buddha gave, a, gave that a lot of importance uh, in, his, in his teaching. Now, Apart from the Satipatthana Sutra, Buddha gave a dedicated discourse on the mindfulness of breathing, which is Anapansati Sutra, discourse on the full awareness of breathing. This is middle discourses 1.11118. Middle discourses 118. The link to this uh, sutra is there in the description. You can uh, read that and get your own insights. Uh, I'm just sharing my learnings from this particular discourse. So in this discourse, Buddha had has so, in Satipatthana Sutra, Buddha gave thus uh, a, a basic idea that when I am breath breathing shallow, I'll, I know that I am breathing shallow. When I am breathing he heavy, I know that I am breathing heavy. Right? So, Buddha gave a basic hint about what is mindfulness of breathing. Right? In this discourse, he has given uh, uh, much, very much in detail. Uh, 16 exercises he has given. That means 16 ways you can practice mindfulness of breathing. Now, what is mindfulness of breathing for, for a simple person? See, my idea is to make it simpler, Buddha's teachings simpler for all of us. And I'm only sharing from my little understanding. Mindfulness of breathing is basically when we breathe in. and So, till now, till, uh, you know, when we are alive, we will continue to breathe, right? When we stop breathing, then we are dead. So, Buddha was very sharp. He said that, you know, he did not recommend all these pranayama and all these things, you know, or the, the breath work. There is no breath work involved here. Buddha said, just be aware of the breathing. So, when I breathe in, when I breathe out, I am aware of my breath. So, the best, a very easy way, uh, how you can be aware of your breathing is that you can bring your attention, your awareness down to your abdomen. And when you breathe in, the abdomen rises. When you breathe out, the abdomen falls. You can just note it as rising, falling. Rising, falling. Just note it. This is mindfulness of breathing. Now, this noting method is by the Mahasi Sadao, the, you know, the, the a very prominent Burmese monk who devised this insight meditation. Right. So, we have to mindfulness of breathing is basically just witnessing the breathing without changing the breathing at all. Just being a witness. Right. So, coming to the actual discourse i am just taking the discourse so just to know as to what buddha says right so this is the discourse uh, it was i think on a full moon uh, where buddha was staying in near savatthi and where there were several senior disciples had come sariputra mahakasipa and lot of senior disciples ananda and were there so it was a big gathering right so there buddha said buddha said Mendicants, when the mindfulness of breathing is developed and cultivated, it is very fruitful and beneficial. It, now listen to this very important thing that Buddha says. Mindfulness of breathing when developed and cultivated fulfills the four kinds of mindfulness meditation. See, what my understanding of this is that even if you practice the mindfulness of breathing, it fulfills all the requirements of Satipatthana, the four factors, the four foundations of mindfulness and can take you to liberation. Right? Nirvana. Right? So, this is how important breathing is. You don't concentrate on any other thing like concentrating on your body or your feelings or, you know, unattractiveness of the body and all those things. Don't concentrate if you don't want to. Just focus on the in and out of this breathing. Right? So, what, whenever you are free at any time of the day or even in your sitting meditation, you can just be aware of the in and out of the breathing. Now, one more thing. Did Buddha say tip of the nose? Right? Uh, uh, because in some traditions like Goenka tradition of the uh, Vipassana, they say that it has to be on the tip of the nose and Buddha said tip of the nose. So, till now, I have not been able to find out any specific discourse where Buddha said 
that you have to focus on the tip of the nose. What Buddha says is just be aware of the breathing. So you need not even focus at some point in the body. You can just be aware of the breathing in and the breathing out. Right? I especially feel that some kind of an anchor uh, like an abdomen is helpful. Even Mahasis, in the Mahasis method, if you see, uh, Mahasi says about the abdomen rising and falling. So this resonates with me. Right? But if you feel that somewhere attention kept here and the in and out of the breathing, if you want to do, you can do. I hope I am not making co things complicated for you. I am keeping it simple. Uh, please give me feedback if, 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 if I am making it complicated for you. Right? Okay. Now, so Buddha says, mindfulness of breathing when developed and cultivated fulfills the four kinds of mindfulness meditation. The four kinds of mindfulness meditation when developed and cultivated fulfills the seven awakening factors. And the seven awakening factors when developed and cultivated fulfills the knowledge and freedom. So, breathing cultivates this, this cultivates this, and this cultivates final freedom. So, this is how important the breathing is. Now, Buddha comes as to what you have to do. So, Buddha says, breathing in heavily, they know I am breathing in heavily. Breathing out heavily, they no, I'm breathing out heavily. This is the first exercise. Second exercise, Buddha says, when breathing in lightly, they know I'm breathing in lightly. Breathing out lightly, they know I'm breathing out lightly. Now, this is not stages that you need to first do one, you know, do second. Buddha says that when you are meditating, so example, you are meditating for 20 minutes. So at some times you will be you may be breathing in heavy. So you just be aware of the heavy breathing. Second, there may be something where you breathe shallow. So you just aware, be aware that I am breathing in shallow. Just awareness, that is essential. So Buddha was very sharp in saying that, in knowing that this in and out of the belly is anyways happening, the breathing is anyways happening. So why not use it? Why not make breathing as an object of meditation? And why not people meditate on that? Right? So that was like Buddha, that's why he said stress so much. It's so easy. Even a small child can start with Anapansati meditation. I have made a dedicated, a guided video on Anapansati meditation on this channel, Breath Awareness Meditation. You can check that uh, on this YouTube channel. Right? So, Buddha says, third exercise. They practice like this. I will breathe in experiencing the whole body. They practice like this. I breathe in, breathe out experiencing the whole body. Fourth exercise. I breathe in stilling the physical process. I'll breathe in, breathe out, stilling the physical process, right? Now, one more important thing before I forget is that this is the meditation that Buddha himself said that I practiced before getting awakened. So, uh, in Buddha's words, Buddha said, before my awakening, when I was still unawakened, but intent on awakening, I too usually, usually practiced this kind of meditation. And while I was usually practicing this kind of meditation, neither my body nor my eyes became fatigued. My mind was freed from defilements by not grasping. So this was the meditation that Buddha himself had practiced. Now coming to exercise 5. I will breathe in experiencing rapture. I will breathe out experiencing rapture. I will breathe in experiencing bliss. I will breathe out experiencing bliss. Seventh exercise. I will breathe in experiencing mental processes. I will breathe out experiencing mental processes. Exercise 8. I will breathe in stilling the mental processes. I'll breathe out stilling the mental processes. Exercise 9. I'll breathe in experiencing the mind. I'll breathe out experiencing the mind. Exercise 10. I'll breathe in gladdening the mind. I'll breathe out gladdening the mind. Exercise 11. I'll breathe in immersing the mind in Samadhi. I'll breathe out immersing the mind in Samadhi. Exercise 12. I breathe in freeing the mind. I'll breathe out freeing the mind. Exercise 13, I'll breathe in observing impermanence. I'll breathe out observing impermanence. Exercise 14, I'll breathe in observing fading away. I'll breathe out observing fading away. I'll breathe 15, I'll breathe in observing secession. I'll breathe out observing secession. Exercise 16, I'll breathe in observing letting go. I'll breathe out observing letting go. So these are the 16 exercises. So as a beginner, we don't need to you know, get stuck into the individual wordings and everything. More important thing to know is that if you want to start off in your meditation, just be aware of that whatever, if you are breathing in and out, if you are breathing heavy, just be aware breathing heavy. Breathing light, be aware that you are breathing light. 
you can breathe in feeling your whole body breathe out feeling your whole body breathing feeling your whole mind breathe out feeling your whole mind so these are the 16 ideas that buddha has given see buddha's knowledge is for the monks what he has given the discourse is like at this level we are lay people so even if you implement 10% of what buddha's knowledge is that's also fine for now right later on as we mature and develop we will get our own insights so but you know i am just sharing what i can share to the best of my ability then buddha says mindfulness of breathing when cultivated in this way is very fruitful uh, and then 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 buddha himself asked how does this mindfulness fulfill the four kinds of mindfulness meditation so buddha says when the mendicant knows that they breathe heavily or lightly or experiencing the whole body or stilling the physical processes they are mind practicing mindfulness of the body which is the first foundation of mindfulness then buddha says whenever the mendicant practices breathing while experiencing rapture bliss mental processes stilling mental processes they are observing the feelings which is the second uh, uh, foundation of mindfulness then buddha says whenever the mendicant practices breathing while experiencing the mind or gladdening the mind or immersing the mind in samadhi they are experiencing the third foundation of mindfulness which is mindfulness of the mind and buddha says whenever the buddha meditate medit- mendicant practices impermanence or fading or cessation or letting go they are observing the principles which is the mindfulness of principles the fourth foundation so 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 what buddha is trying to say that breathing in and observing these various things can also help in you know fulfilling all the four foundations of mindfulness which uh, uh, buddha had said in the satipatthana sutra and satipatthana sutra is the direct path to liberation that buddha said now important thing what my understanding here is that in one meditation session you need not you know do all the 16 exercises it's not practicable right otherwise your mind will be lost that i need to do all 16 no just flow with whatever comes up sometimes you may come across observing the impermanence then some somewhere uh, it's the sen- painful sensations that come so you are observing the physical sensations right so that way also you can breathe but this is just some ideas that you can use for your meditation right so this is the mindfulness of mindfulness of breathing the anapansati sutra this is a very very important sutra then uh, buddha said that it generates in some other two three sutras that i checked buddha said is it what it helps is also generates impermanence it helps generating detachment the more you practice so i have been practicing anapansati for some years now and over time you know it has helped me a lot and in the most difficult phases of our life especially in 2021 when it was like i was almost near depression and you know kind of a near suicide kind of a situation i was practicing this right and even actually i was drawn to practice the insight meditation without even knowing that i am practicing insight meditation right so so start with anapansati meditation and uh, uh, you can use the guided meditation that i have given so buddha says it generates impermanence it uh, takes away the detachment it 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 gives detachment it gets over lust and annoying thoughts so if annoying thoughts any stress that is coming so thai a buddhist monk very you know very good way he says if you see the zen master thignat hans teachings and you can also see his videos on the eight exercise of uh, mindful breathing that is also very good on this sutra only he has given very detailed good exposition and thai's way of teaching is very very beautiful so he said that the whole thing or whole you know process now is bring our mind bring ourselves from our mind to our abdomen and practice the in and out of the breathing so when we do the practice of the in and out of the breathing we generate the energy of mindfulness within us that energy of mindfulness takes care of all our thoughts and the energy of anger and lust and desire and everything and especially when times are difficult i found that you know practicing simple awareness of breathing to be very very helpful because i stop getting lost in thoughts of depression of thoughts of you know you know all the negative things just i bring myself back so that's the practice that's the practice we need to do not only at the times when the times are good but when the times are bad right so and this is a very fruitful and beneficial practice as with the said so this is it i hope this video was helpful check out the links in the description for detailed study of these sutras 
uh, if you have any comment feedback reflection to share do share in the comment section um, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya